There's so much to learn, so much to explore From the surface of the water to the ocean floor It's Porky's Ocean Patrol, yes, Porky's Ocean Patrol Ahoy my friends, welcome to Porky's Ocean Patrol A show with me, Porky, and my friends Georgie, Carno and you, my ocean patrollers Together we'll discover all about our great southern reef the wonderful sea creatures that call it home and how we can all keep our oceans happy and healthy. Woohoo! Incoming call from an ocean patroller. Ahoy, Porky. How do we look after our local sand dunes? Ahoy there, Claire. That's a sandy good question. And I reckon my mate Georgie's got just the right wave of wisdom to help us out. Georgie, you there? You bet, Porky. So, kids, Picture this. South Australia's coast was once like a colossal sandbox crafted by the sea over thousands of years. But as time went on, humans built stuff on top of it, disrupting the natural flow of the sand. So we have to take care of the sand dunes that remain. They protect our beaches from disappearing. That's right. Think of the dunes like a sandy beach fortress and the plants there are the brave defenders. They use their roots to stand strong, keeping the sand safe from big waves and gusty winds. Exactly, Porky. So here's the deal. If you step on them or walk through their home, the dunes, it's like sending the defenders away on holiday. Not so good for the sandy castle. We want those plants to stay strong and protect the dunes, just like superheroes. Dunes are their own special habitat at the beach. We've got lizards catching insects, birds singing songs, and maybe even a snake having a snooze. So our job is to be like respectful neighbours and not crash their parties. We'll admire from a distance and let them enjoy their sandy mansion in peace. Wise words, Georgie. And here's the fantastic part. If you're a beach-loving eco-hero, stick to the pathways, follow signs, and if you're up for it, join groups helping out with dune revegetation projects. It's like giving the dunes a makeover, nature style. Couldn't have put it better, Porky. Thanks for tuning in, little ocean patrollers. And remember, a little care goes a long way in preserving our coastal wonders. You've got the power to make a splash and keep those dunes looking fabulous. Excuse me, Georgie. I gotta get this call. Ahoy, Porky. I found this on the beach. Can you tell me what it is? Wowee! Ted, you stumbled upon a treasure indeed. That, my young explorer friend, is a Port Jackson shark egg. And let it be known, it's no ordinary egg. It's the first home of a baby Port Jackson shark a stripy Australian fellow with a love for rocky reefs. You see, the Port Jackson shark's mum lays a dozen spiral-shaped eggs that look like ocean treasures themselves. She tucks them into cosy rock crevices, keeping the eggs safe and hidden. Now, here's the fantastic part. The eggs hatch into adorable shark pups after about a year of growing. These pups, with their unique harness-like markings, then venture into the shallows until they grow big enough for deep sea adventures. Port Jackson sharks are super cruisy and don't have typical shark jaws. They have small pointy front teeth and blunt back teeth, special for munching on sea urchins, mollusks and crustaceans, keeping the underwater balance in check. Top tip, if you want a front row seat to this stripy soiree, head to Port Norlunga Reef in Encounter Marine Park from summer to autumn. It's like a fancy party where the Port Jackson sharks gather to mingle and mate. But, my little friends, these cuties need our help. Overfishing, climate change and habitat loss are casting shadows on their underwater paradise. So let's be ocean guardians, respecting their home and spreading the word to protect these striped wonders. The ocean, known as sea country, is an important part of Aboriginal culture and we all play an important role caring for the sea. My friend Kano can help us learn more about Aboriginal culture. 
Nina Mani, Indy. Nina Mani, Porky and Kano. I was wondering, how far can Ghana people throw spears? Great question. Aboriginal people are like the masters of spear throwing. And they use this awesome tool called a midla to help them throw spears really far. Isn't that right, Kano? Sure is, Porky. The midla is like an extension of the arm and it makes spear throwing so much easier and also way more fun. It helps throw spears with more speed, great distance and with more power. And guess what? I've got some here to show you. Wow, so cool. We throw these lightweight spears, the kaya, the grass tree spear, the cork beam, the reed spear, and the wito, the toy reed spear, with the midler. But how's this? They don't use it for heavy spears like the wernta, the barb spear. Interesting. You see, each spear has its own special job. The kaya spear is perfect for hunting, or fighting. It is made with a tea tree or eucalyptus timber shaft, sinew, and is glued together with grass tree resin. The Gurtby spear is like a multi-tool. It is used for fishing, hunting, and even in battle. The shaft is made from common reed, and the tip is made from tea tree or eucalyptus timber. Are any made for kids to use? Ah, the whittle is like a toy spear for kids. It's made from common reed and has a dry grass ball at the end. The kids use it for battle games and to practice spear throwing by aiming at a round bark target, the mukrata. Wow, thanks for sharing that with us, Kano. What is a shark baby called? A. Signet. B. Fish. C. Pup. D. Cub. The answer is C. Pup. What is the middler used for? A. Throwing spears far. B. Making clothes. C. Surfing. The answer is A. Throwing spears far. Guess what time it is, Ocean Patrollers? It's Porky's Activity Time. Head over to my website for this week's activity to download. You can become a Porky's Ocean Patroller too and protect our wonderful sea creatures and their homes by taking your very own Porky's Ocean Pledge. Find the special POP Pledge certificate with the link I've put in the description. Thanks for watching. It's been swell. See you next time. Porky's Ocean Patrol.